But we're going to begin installation of the heads. Uh, in the prior video, I said the heads are ready. We went and picked them up. Uh, basically, it's short block. Now we're going with a long block, putting on the heads. Um, I'm hoping you can see reasonably well. Uh, I hope this is more of a general guidance, I hope. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll try to stay together as best we can. The uh, head gaskets, from everything I can tell, and hopefully I am not wrong. Um, they do not have a top or a bottom. Uh, no markings, indications that I can find. No conversation in the manual about it that I can find. So we're going to have to assume that. And uh, <clears throat> they are MLS gaskets, multi-layer steel gaskets. you got to have clean gasket surfaces for these things to work effectively. And they also need to be smooth. They need to have a reasonably good RMS. Basically the surface smooth. Uh, Smoothness has to be there. So, we've got the gaskets sitting on. Now for the heads. Um, let me say these, uh, as always, did a great job for us. And I'm going to reference them later, or in the description, I should say. Um, I'm going to give their information, their details. If you happen to be from in and around the Houston area, I would encourage you, strongly encourage you, uh, to consider making use of them. Um, I, I didn't show you, I guess I should have, but we've got all new valve seats in, the, in these heads, and they actually peen them so that the valve seat can't come out. Um, and so it's considerably better than the stock version of this head, uh, which does not have peen valve seats. and. Uh, those valve seats are a bit prone to coming out. Steel seats and aluminum, and aluminum head. Now, before I forget, very important. These heads must be in time with the motor, close, before you install them. Uh, by the way, this is an old gear. Um, just using it for positioning of the head. These things have to be close to in time. This is an interference motor. If you're not close to in time and you go later and try to turn this cam to get it in time, you're going to be hitting valves against pistons um, while you're trying to get it in time. So it has to be right. The other option is you forget to put it in time before you, uh, before you install it and you have to take it off. Uh, well, just as bad. I mean, now you've lost waste a set of bolts and a gasket. And so just remember, please, you need to get this in time before you secure the head. Now, how do you get it in time? Well, I use a monster pair of vice grips to get it in time. And I retain uh, my old gears just for this purpose, just so that I can rotate this, thing, rotate this thing and get it in time. I'm gonna set it back up off here and rotate, put it in time. But in time in this case means, let me see if I can show you on this old gear. Let me get it up here where you can see it, I hope. You'll note, uh, here it says V6, here's an L, here's an R, excuse me, R, then L. Right side of motor, left side of motor, V6 goes on top. When V6 is pointing directly up, then that's the uh, top dead center, that's zero degrees timing adjustment. So that needs to be up now. Up is not with this head sitting on the flat, up is with it sitting at the angle it is on the engine. So up would be, you know, more closer to 45 degrees if this head were laying flat. Basically, you want it to look just like this, V8 up on both sides uh, before you secure the head. Uh, so that once you, once we get to the timing, which comes next, uh, we'll be in a good place. Let me set this just off to the side here and see if I can't adjust it. We're 180 out on this, on this head. And so, we need to fix that real quick. Let me do that and get right back to you. Doesn't take too much. It takes a little bit of force because you're trying to go against these valve springs, but it's doable. Let's get a bigger, bigger pair of pliers, all I can say. Okay. Now, one of the things is it doesn't quite go exactly straight up and down and that's because of the spring force 
Um, some of these valves should at this point be slightly open or on the close, whichever, but uh, they're not because there's no chain holding it and spring force wants to take it all the way to open or all the way closed. And so basically you have to get it close and then check it without bolting it on and see if it's going to be able to go into the right position. Now I'm going to have to take it one more click, one more series of valves on the cam. See, my back is about done today. Getting old is off. All right, it's going to be under some spring, spring tension there, but I think we're going to be close right there. Let's go take a look. Ugh. trust these dowels. There you go. V8 is straight up and down right now. So we can begin to secure this thing. I'm going to put one bolt in here temporarily to keep everything anything from trying to run away. So putting these heads on, this timing system, all that, clearly the most challenging part. Well, other than those bearings that tried to kill me, but definitely uh, technically a very interesting part of the motor to do. There's a lot, a lot to it. It's not terribly hard, but there's a lot of steps and a lot of things you don't want to miss, like having the heads in time before you secure them to the block. Now there are eight 15 millimeter headed. I think they're M10. Anyway, head bolts. And luckily, they have eight holes. And then there are four smaller bolts, 10, milli 10 millimeter headed bolts, that uh, go on the front portion of the head. So, one thing I don't do, please don't be confused by any of the noise that this impact makes. Um, this impact will barely tighten above hand tight the way it's set right now. So I just use it to run up bolts. Not use it to tighten bolts. Just use it to run them up. Also, I'm not worried about having them because I'm not tightening them up. I'm just pushing, just setting them. And what you find, the head sitting down, slowly sitting down on the dowels. Alright, there's four. Oh, by the way, these were M11s. 15 um, millimeter bolts here on the head are M11s. These are M8s with 10 millimeter heads. And there's four of these small bolts. Two of them on the outside of the head. Two of them on the inside of the head. They come with a uh, dried sealant on them because they do penetrate a water jacket. Um, I go ahead and Add some additional sealant to feed my neurosis. Get that bolt out of there. Go ahead and stick it in right there. Okay, so back to it. Um, all four of these bolts are in place. There's one here, one right in here, and there's two up here um, outside of the confines of the head. And uh, like I told you, this thing is set to do very little, so I'm going to run them up. And these things are only going to 10 foot pounds of torque anyway, but this thing won't even take it that far the way I have to set it. It's just to make life easier. Alright, so we've got that. Basically, all the head bolts are installed. Now for the torquing sequence. The uh, first bolts you deal with are the 15 millimeter M11s and like with everything the manual has a page uh, that gives you the torquing sequence. So the first thing we do is we torque this thing to 20 foot pounds. And 20 foot pounds isn't much and we're going to come back and do two passes at 90 degrees each. 
But on this 20 foot pounds, you need to keep going around and around until you have 20 foot pounds sustained. What will happen with those dials is you'll think you're 20 foot pounds and you're actually just seating it still onto the dials. And so we'll go around this thing a couple times. So we get them all to 20 foot pounds to start with. And then we'll come back and do it again and again, however many times necessary to get to 20 foot pounds consistently. Back to one, back to one. I mean, it's pretty loose still, so it's still seating itself on the deck of the block. Close now. Not getting any. Not getting any turn. I'm gonna go around one more time. No turn. No turn there. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So they're all at 20 and sustain. So now we're going to take. These four smaller bolts down to 10 foot pounds is all they get. 10 foot pounds. So they also have a pattern. The upper inside bolt. Let's change sockets just for fun. That'll fit better. So this upper inside bolt. I have it. I go back and recheck everything. And again, these all have sealants on them. Do not want a water port leak. Alright, now that those are all tight, then we go back to the 15 millimeter bolts. But this time we're going to start taking them 90 degree rotations. It's uh, 90 degrees twice. So you take the full pattern once at 90, and then come back and do the second set of 90. It is not trivial. 
So I'd say the first time is not hard. Second time, quite fun. These are torque to yield bolts. Never ever reuse your head bolts. See what? I can get myself a little bit of an extension here. A little further away from my work. And number eight. Okay, so that's 90 degrees. Now we're going to go another 90. The fun 90 here. This 90 is not nearly as bad with this nice big breaker bar. I recommend you get you one. It's a 24 inch if you're going to do this job. Whew. When they yield, and they do sometimes, it's very strange. I hope you're about to twist the bolt off. So here's number six. And then number seven. Finally, number eight. All right, so it's on. Right or wrong, good or bad. It is what it is. It is on. So, 10 foot pounds on these. 20 foot pounds going around and around and around until they sustain 20 foot pounds. Excuse me, let me just say this. Do the 20 foot pounds here, around and around until it's sustained. 10 foot pounds here. Make sure it's sustained. Then come back two rounds, 90 degrees each, following the torque pattern, and you're in place. The most important part of the head install on this motor is making sure that your cam is timed before you bolt this head on. If you don't, you're done for. So make sure that the your top dead center, one way to know before your heads go on, you can tell when number one, which is over here on the uh, left side of the motor, when it's at the very top of its rotation, and if you slide the primary timing gear on, You'll see if the dot will be in the 6 o'clock position. That tells you your top dead center. Then, make sure your heads, make sure V8, V6, excuse me, in this case, is pointing up. you got an R and an L. Make sure they're properly oriented. And you noted earlier that I used channel locks on this thing to rotate the cam and the valve system. Only do that if you're using your old gears. I suggest you always keep your old gears so that you can manipulate this thing. Uh, without worrying of messing up your new gears. So from here, it's time to put the timing system in this little wonder and see where we go from there. So, timing system's next.